Hello, and welcome back to the studio. I'm Dr. Wigo, and today I've got 10 tips and hints, and I don't know what to call them, things to help you get ready if you've just switched from Windows to Mac, because things are very different, very different. Although a lot of it's also the same. Eh. The first thing, and this isn't one of the 10 tips, but the first thing you get asked when you go to set up your new Mac is it's gonna say, do you wanna transfer stuff from another machine? If you're new to the Mac coming straight from Windows, well, one of the things it offers is the Windows Migration Assistant, which will move your files and stuff over and all sorts of stuff. But maybe you don't wanna do that. If you're one of the people who just used all the default locations for everything in Windows, like you put all your documents in the Documents folder and you put all your pictures in the Pictures folder, if you just use the standard folders in Windows, well then yeah, go right ahead. Use the Windows Migration Assistant. But if you're like me and you had complicated folder structures on data volumes and all this kind of stuff, well, maybe you want to bring your files over yourself on external drives, which works great, by the way. So you just put your files onto an XFAT drive, you know, SSD, and then you bring it over and you can move them on the Mac. Or just keep using those SSDs because, again, the internal stuff is very expensive. So you may want to have external SSDs, and this is a great, easy way to move all your file structures over and folder structures over without a lot of problem. First thing you're going to have to worry about, right-clicking because the Mac just has a single button on its mouse or trackpad. It's just a one-click kind of thing. Well, if you're like me, you're really used to right-clicking and so you want to be able to right-click. Well, you can, but you have to do a little setup. If you're using a trackpad, you'll just go up to the menu, System Settings, and then scroll down and get to Trackpad. And then if you scroll down, you will see you can use two fingers, you can have it either Upper right, lower right. I use the two finger tap on the trackpad. It's just, it's easier that way. Now, if you're going the magic mouse way, well then you go to system settings and go down to mouse and you will see that there is a secondary click and you can turn that on and that's what I use to right click. And then you just click the right edge of the magic mouse and it reads that as a right click and you can pop up menus and do all the stuff you do with a right click. Now, one of the biggest differences between Windows and the Mac is menu bars, because on the Mac, the menu bar is always at the top of the screen, no matter what window you're in. Whereas on Windows, of course, it's right attached to the window, which makes multitasking way better on Windows because your menu bar is right with your window. So when you've got multiple windows open, when you go to another window, you can go right to the menu bar. Now you have to click on the other window and if you want, gotta go way up to the menu bar. This is why Mac users learn so many keyboard shortcuts. I have a 40 inch 4K monitor and it's a long trip to haul up to the upper left hand corner to get to the menu bar. I have an OLED screen, so one of the first things I did was I go down to Control Center. I don't know why it's there, but if you go way down, you will find Automatically Hide the Menu Bar. And so I click on that, and now the menu bar will go away unless I put my mouse up at the top of the screen, and then it will drop back down. Now the other thing are the little dots in, up at the top of the window which on Windows, over on the right-hand side, like you click the little red X and it goes away, well, this little red dot doesn't quite do the same thing. We do have a yellow dot and a green dot. Now, the green dot will full screen, so you can just hit the green dot to go into full screen or, and come back. The yellow dot will minimize the window into the dock, which we'll get to shortly. See, it's down there now and you can click on it, it comes right back. But the red dot closes the window but does not quit the application. So when you want to quit the application, you have to go up to the menu bar and select quit. Yeah, that's a bit of a pain. That's one where Windows is actually a little better, but hey, they can't all be great. Now the next big difference is the keyboards. If you're coming from Windows, you are used to hitting control whatever, because the control key is your modifier key that you use for cut and copy and paste and all that kind of stuff. Well, not on the Mac. On the Mac, it's the command key, which back in the day we called the splat key because the little symbol on it looks like a splat. We made it up. 
So it's Command C for copy and Command V. Now, there is an upside. On most Windows keyboards, the Control key is way over, so you have to do a bit of a reach to do Control C. On the Mac, the command, key, the command key is right next to the space bar, so hitting Command C, Command V, Command, etc., pretty easy. Just to keep things confusing, there's also a control key, but it doesn't work like the control key on Windows. The command key is what used to be, you're used to as the control key. The control key is another modifier key that you can use for other things. And there's an option key. So you can do command option and get different things that we'll talk about in a minute. So yeah, that's gonna take a little getting used to. Whenever you think you should need to hit control something, you hit command something. I mean, it's that, it's that easy, but it will take you a minute to get used to it. Now this next one, if you're a Windows Power user, you're used to the File Explorer, and the File Explorer has that little nice little path bar where you can click on things to move back and up and down folder structures. Both Windows and the Mac are set up where you're supposed to just stick things in a Documents folder and then you don't need all that folder structure stuff. But the Mac has the capability. So on the Mac, you want to go over to the View menu and hit Show Path Bar. And see, there it pops up down at the bottom. And you can see the path through your folders, and you can click on the little thing at the bottom, and it'll jump you back. Again, if you're coming from Windows, the taskbar is where lots of stuff happens. I use the taskbar all the time. I would pin things to the taskbar so I could just click on it to open it. Well, the Mac has the equivalent called the dock, which is typically down at the bottom of the screen, and you just click on things on the dock, and they pop open. In my last video, I said that Numbers, Pages, and Keynote are usable right out of the box. Well, that's not technically true. They're in the App Store, but they're free, so you have to go get them. So, let me run Get Them. And then if you go down and click on the little launch pad in the dock, you get, like, the iPad-like view. Now, this is page two. But you can just grab this and drag it down to the dock and put it wherever you want. So... I'll put it there, and then you run over, and there's pages and numbers, and we'll just put those right next to the keynote. There's your little office suite, and you got them in the dock. The right side of the dock, over at the right end of the dock, you have recently used applications, and then you also, at the very end, you have your downloads folder, things you've minimized, and the trash can, and you can right-click on the trash can to empty it, so instead of the trash can being out on the desktop, it's in the dock. So the dock can be a little more useful than the taskbar, but it's different. And there's other things that you're used to in the taskbar, like the start menu. Well, that launch pad is kind of like the start menu, except not really. Just keep messing around. You'll figure it out eventually. Now to get to control center, you go up to the right hand, upper right hand column, you see the little icon there for control center and you can drop it down and there's your different things and you can you know change change what's where your change where your sound outputs go and you have access to all these things and you can customize it in system settings you go to control panel and there you can have the icons not just be in the control panel you can put them up into the menu bar Stick in some sound recognition. Again, hiding the menu bar because of the OLED screen. And see now my sound recognition is down there added to my control panel. Now in Windows, in the taskbar, that's where the little search field is. Of course that's not where it is on the Mac. In the Mac, it's up in the menu bar, up in the corner next to that control center icon, there was a little magnifying glass. So if you click on the little magnifying glass, you get spotlight search, which is very powerful. It will search through everything on your Mac. It'll search the web. It'll search everywhere. You can type in simple calculations. And if you notice the little calculator icons over on the right, or you can put in weights and it'll do conversions. You can search for applications. Also notice it'll find things in system settings. So if you're looking for a particular system setting, you can use Spotlight Search and find where you go for that setting and just click on that and go straight there. It'll show you things in the App Store. 
And here is where in system settings, this is where you can control what it will include in its search. So if there's things coming up you don't want to see, we'll just go in here and turn off the little tick boxes and it won't include those things when it's doing its search anymore. I don't like sending my stuff to people, so I turn off the uh, send my results to Apple so they can improve their search. Yeah, it's their problem. In the comments on the last video, several people, and this comes up a lot with former Windows users. I wasn't one of these people, but apparently a lot of Windows users use Alt-Tab to constantly move between windows. So if they're looking for a different window, they use Alt-Tab. We don't really have that on the Mac. You do and you don't. So here I got a bunch of windows open, and if I use Command Tab, see, it will let me flip between applications, not windows. So when you go to an application, if it has multiple windows open, you're gonna get the most recent window, and then you have to physically then click on one of the other windows to get it to switch to that because you can't use Command Tab within an app. Application. That's for moving across applications. So here I've got Safari open with two windows and I go to use my command tab. And see, I can go to Safari, I can go to numbers. You get the idea. And finally, when an application stops responding, which doesn't happen as often on Mac as it does on Windows, but it still happens. So if you have an application that's not responding and you want to and the task, well, on Windows, you would just go to taskbar and get task manager and say end task. Yeah, not here. On Mac, you go up to the Apple menu and drop it down and it will say force quit. And then there's your applications that are running. And so you pick the one that's not responding and say force quit. That's the end task. So I know I've only scratched the surface. There's lots of other differences. And in fact, I'll do more videos. And first I have to kind of learn some of this stuff because I've only been using the Mac as my full-time machine for a, since I got the Mac Studio, which you could go watch that video down below. I'll also do some apps. There are a lot of apps you can get for on the Mac that will help it be more like Windows if there are things in Windows you like, like Windows snapping into, into place when you move them around. Mac doesn't do that natively, but there are apps that'll let you do that. There's like several. Some of them are free, most of them are really cheap. There's lots of little quality of life apps that people have done that are in the App Store, verified by Apple. They're not gonna cause you a lot of problems. In fact, I've installed several apps from the App Store to make my Mac more like my old Windows machine. There were things I liked. I like wallpaper engine. Well, there's a wallpaper like in engine like, but I'll need to do a video because it's not a straight forward thing. So that's coming up in the future. We also have WWC coming up real soon. So there'll be a video about that after all those announcements. Plenty of Apple content coming. And plus I've got a game I want to talk about. Claire Obscure, Expedition 33, game of the year. I have a video about that coming. There's lots of stuff coming, so subscribe. Come on back. But that's it for today. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time. Bye-bye. I got to go figure out what I'm going to talk about next week. Thanks for staying to the end. Bye-bye.